Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tess. I am a licensed esthetician and in today's video I wanted to discuss a important topic and skin condition, perioral dermatitis. This is a very, very common condition. I believe it's becoming an epidemic, especially amongst women. And I wanna talk more about what it is, what we know about it. Although it's a very mysterious condition, there's a lot we don't know and the possible treatment options, as well as you know some things I think are important to know in terms of your skincare from an esthetician's point of view. Please understand this video is not intended to be a substitute for medical advice. It's not a diagnosis, obviously. And really at the heart of this video, one of my main points is that I really strongly encourage anyone who is struggling with perioral dermatitis or just any skin condition that seems a little bit suspicious, a little bit out of the ordinary. It seems to be progressing, persisting, getting worse, not getting better, and not going away, I really encourage everyone to hopefully find a dermatologist, make contact with someone, and get it diagnosed and get it treated as soon as possible. I see a lot of people and a lot of clients who would rather brush these things under the rug and try to self-diagnose and self-treat and you know, kind of hope it goes away. And I also understand at the same time, you know, it can be difficult to get to see a doctor. Not everyone has insurance. There can be lots of little battles. But if, if you can, I really highly encourage everyone to always see a doctor if something is persisting and not getting, not getting any better. I was actually really prompted to make this video because I'm currently struggling with perioral dermatitis and it often occurs along the jawline near the mouth the nose it can even make its way up to the eye area which is a little bit scary of course so I have been struggling with PD off and on for the past five years it'll be kind of dormant for you know a year and a half and usually as the weather starts to get warmer which is just something i notice with the seasonal change and with temperatures warming up i do start to see more clients with it and this is when i start to struggle with it more so myself so i actually posted a picture to my instagram stories and i got a pretty strong response from a lot of people estheticians, people who just follow my content who have struggled with PD, and I could just really tell the frustration in the types of responses from people who have dealt with this condition and you guys wanted to hear more about it and to understand what are some answers we can look to and as estheticians can we treat this what should we know so i want to talk a little bit more about that in the video today thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and let's talk more about pd so before this video i actually did a little interview i called up jan marini who's been such a great mentor to me and so generous with her time and her knowledge and I never want to bother her too much but since she does say that I can contact her with any questions I did reach out and interviewed her a little bit over the phone before this video because I wanted to know more from a skin researcher's perspective so I have some notes here from Jan. So perioral dermatitis is a type of facial rash it is in that very broad category of dermatitis which can really mean a lot of things typically it's characterized by these little tiny papules or pustules they're seen mostly around the mouth around the jaw around the nose and they can make their way up to the eye area so for myself i noticed it started with a couple little little breakouts over here, which is pretty unusual for me. This is an, an area I break out super often, but yeah, I went to extract and found, you know, I wasn't getting much out and they kind of were persisting there. A couple days later, I noticed a little bit of a rash around here, around my mouth, 
that was kind of a little clue for me. So that's something for other estheticians to know as well because PD can present so closely to acne. Like it really can look like little tiny whiteheads or even closed comedones. So if you see any kind of rash in the area, I think that is a good little indicator. And if the client is experiencing any burning, itching, or notices any scaly like texture, that's also a good indication. So this is where I noticed the bumps popping up. Slowly over time, the condition did persist and it started getting worse. It started with just a couple little bumps. All of a sudden I counted and there were about 25 in this area. Of course, you can't really see it on film. And I am lucky because, I mean, this condition can be pretty brutal. If you look up some of the conditions, this is definitely a more mild case and you'd have to really get up in there. And more so, you, you feel it if you were to touch my skin right now. But I have some little little bumps all over and again they do present very closely to acne if you try to extract them it will not get rid of them you may get a little bit of a clear fluid out of the bumps but that's not what's going to make the bumps go away it's not the same as extracting a breakout and getting rid of it i think the main thing we all want to know is what is the main cause of perioral dermatitis is there something i'm doing wrong topically or in my life Style that I should adjust and it's a little bit of a yes and no question the true cause of perioral dermatitis is unknown and what seems to be the case is that it's a pretty multifactorial condition where a lot of different things could be playing a role and could be going on at one time that might kind of create this perfect storm or PD outbreak one thing that is commonly seen is that topical steroid use can be a precursor for PD outbreaks. So that's something to consider. I have seen clients before who are long time topical steroid users or who have even been told to use topical steroids as a moisturizer for long periods of time, which I don't necessarily agree with, but it does happen. And that is one thing to consider with PD in addition to nasal sprays, hormonal changes, and even thick moisturizers, thick sunscreens, and fluorinated toothpaste. I reached out to my dermatologist. She suggested that the main triggers are often stress and heat, both of which make sense for me. I have two businesses. I'm often very busy. I also make a lot of content, have family obligations, romantic obligations, all these things that can manifest in me being stressed out unnecessarily, <laughs> something I'm working on. Heat, something that undoubtedly plays a role in these types of inflammatory conditions. I'm always a proponent of keeping the skin cool and calm, which is why in my treatment plans with my clients, I always suggest cold rolling and applying cool compresses, perhaps putting your moisturizer in the fridge and doing cooling anti-inflammatory treatments, trying not to wash your face in water that's too, too hot, taking long hot showers, long hot baths, or even exposure to hot tubs, hot yoga, hot heated workouts outside is something to be aware of because that heat is just not going to benefit any type of inflammatory condition, whether it's psoriasis, acne, eczema, or perioral dermatitis. What are some things estheticians should be aware of when looking at a client with PD? For one, PD is not acne, so there's no nucleus, there's no blackhead or whitehead, there's no head to the lesion as there would be with an acne lesion. Similarly with rosacea, this is a rash that can present across the nose and the cheeks, but typically rosacea does not make its way around the mouth, along the chin or the jawline, so that is a little clue if the rash is presenting around the mouth it's a good time to refer out 
to a dermatologist. Now, I got the question, how can I treat PD as an esthetician? And that's where I would, you know, come in and say strongly, it's not something we should attempt to diagnose or treat. It's really a situation where you want to put the client's best interests first. And although you might want to help and be tempted to treat your client and help them out, the best, most helpful thing you can do is suggest and strongly encourage that they see a dermatologist or a doctor who can diagnose and treat the condition. Now, would I give a facial to a client with perioral dermatitis? Personally, I probably would not. I would want to for one, put the client's health and safety first, and number two, I would want to consider my liability as well. So with PD, typically it is best to avoid any type of aggressive treatment or occlusive treatment on the area. So for that reason, I just think it's better, it's better for the client to wait when for when you can treat the whole face and they can get the full experience because you would want to avoid, you know, that area where the PD is presenting. Now, with your skincare, I do think you can basically continue things as normal and avoid the areas the PD is presenting, but it's definitely not a bad idea to keep things simple at home and in the treatment room. So personally, I would prefer not to work on somebody with perioral dermatitis. I would tell them their money is better spent finding a dermatologist and making sure this is treated and that you can explore some of these possible triggers together. But what are the treatment options for perioral dermatitis? I would say in my opinion it is something that should be treated by the doctor. I wouldn't say I have a ton of confidence in the otherwise wonderful products that I offer. I just don't know enough to say it could really help with perioral dermatitis and in my opinion if you're not really helping if you're not trying to get to the root cause you can be hurting somebody in this condition if it is progressing without treatment so that's why i always again encourage somebody to see a doctor some of the treatment options that they might suggest are number one azelaic acid kind of interesting this is a topical i often recommend for acne and rosacea it does have some anti-inflammatory qualities and antibacterial qualities number two clindamycin a more mild antibiotic that can be used topically. Number three, airy gel. I haven't heard of that one. And metro gel. I've heard mixed things about this one, as well as Elidel, Cetamide, and Protopic. So these are kind of the first line of defense. Oftentimes these are used. I have heard patients say, you know, they got a certain cream or topical from their derm and it didn't work. So they kind of gave up. It can take some time to find the right topical for your PD. So again, I would encourage you to find the one that really, really works and nips this thing in the bud again, because we don't want it to worsen or spread. So if these treatment options don't work, a lot of times doctors will recommend antibiotics such as minocycline, doxycycline, or tetracycline. And I will tell you from my personal experience, minocycline is the thing that has knocked it out in one to two days. And again, I think you guys know me, but if you don't, I am in school to be a health coach. I live a very healthy lifestyle. I have struggled with chronic illness for years. Since I was in high school, I have seen a lot of naturopaths and I think they're great. I'm really all about this holistic picture of health. I look at all my clients' holistic picture of health and Health and wellness is something I am for sure passionate about, and I definitely believe a lot of these lifestyle components can play a role in the condition. But again, when it comes to something inflammatory, something that can spread and that can worsen and that can travel and affect, you know, other areas of the skin and that can can see limited results from certain topicals, this is where I think an antibiotic 
may be necessary. Is it something I love to say, you know, go take antibiotics? Of course not. I think we're fortunate a lot of doctors realize that too, and it is becoming more of a I'd say necessary evil or last resort option, but for me, it's the thing that has really nipped it in the bud, and I'm so thankful for that because it's not fun to, you know, have PD persisting on your skin for weeks to months. It's really not, and I have sat in that camp where, you know, I'm really against antibiotics and not excited to take them and I'm still not but it is the thing that has helped so I tend to up my probiotics try to take it easy on myself you know um, get good rest and make sure my nutrition and hydration and gut flora is supported in as many ways as I can but ultimately I did make the decision to take an antibiotic and you know my hope with that is to have it treated as soon as possible. So I think the the individual really needs to weigh the pros and cons and consider that this is a condition that can persist or get worse if untreated. Again, it can go away on its own, but I think it is a good idea to always consider your treatment options and you know, know they're there. Lastly, let's talk about skincare a little bit and what you should be using while struggling with perioral dermatitis. So I have heard a little bit of mixed things. My derm said no need to change your routine. She knows I use retinol and you know other exfoliating products. Talking to Jan Marini, she you know, felt that the routine could be used all over the face, but you may want to avoid those areas where you are experiencing a little bit of a rash or a breakout. And I think that totally makes sense because some of these exfoliating products can sting when applied. So that is one thing to know. You might want to avoid those areas. When it comes to the products I'm using in my routine, I'll talk a little bit about my cleansers. This is my brand, Free Skin by Tessa. And I want wanted to create these products for a number of reasons. I see acne clients, I see rosacea clients, and I'll see a sprinkling of those struggling with PD and it's something that can, you know, be intermittent throughout a client's life and it's very important all people in these categories have gentle cleansers in their routine that are not going to strip the barrier, that are not going to be clogging. So that was really, really important in creating my products. I wanted them to be acne safe and similarly non-occlusive and okay for those with perioral dermatitis to use. So both are okay to use. They are hydrating, gentle, and they are soap-free and free of SLS. So I do have a number of clients who are using these and they say their PD is responding really, really well to them. So this is a good, safe option for, again, acne sufferers, rosacea sufferers, and those with perioral dermatitis. And we want to keep the skin clean, calm, and not occluded. A product I really love that I would not say is a replacement for these topical medications or oral medications, but it is a really good one that you can use to help with inflammation, any stinging, burning, or heat in the skin. This is Glymed Plus's CBD Micro Silver Miracle Serum. It has been studied as a replacement for topical steroids in a lot of cases such as psoriasis and eczema. I think PD is one that's really, really stubborn. And a lot of times it can have more internal triggers. So for that reason, I wouldn't say this is a replacement for these other steroids, but it is one that is safe to use that can provide some, some relief from any type type of discomfort. To moisturizer, this is the one that I use. Of course, it's the giant professional size, but they also offer retail sizes. So you do not have to purchase this moisturizer. It's just the one that I use, and I get a lot of questions about what moisturizers are safe for PD. So this is the Oxygen Treatment Cream by Glymed Plus. It's a really nice, light formula, almost serum-like, but 
it's important with PD not to clog the skin. So again, you don't want to use any occlusive, even cleansers. I would avoid cleansing balms. I would avoid like a Pond's cold cream. A better alternative would be the undo. And then with your moisturizer, you want to make sure it's not a thick, heavy cream like an Olay cream, anything like that. Something nice and lightweight is perfect. When it comes to makeup, makeup can also be a sneaky culprit for occluding the skin. So we want to avoid that. There's a lot of bad makeup out there, you guys. I think people tend to look at the brand first and the finish of the makeup product and, you know, the reviews and how the makeup wears, but I would strongly encourage you to think about whether the makeup is really safe for the skin and if it's creating any type of occlusion and if it's acne safe. So the makeup I will always forever recommend is Oxygenetics. It's a very beautiful acne safe makeup. And something important to know is while you are experiencing a PD breakout, I would really avoid wearing any makeup on the skin and just keep that area clean. I do have a tinted SPF all over my face, but I'm avoiding this area where the breakout is so avoid makeup while you're experiencing a breakout but in general this is a really really nice foundation to opt for as promised i wanted to mention my toothpaste so this is the toothpaste i use it is free of sls and free of fluoride it is acne safe and it is a great option for anyone struggling with pd what i would also suggest is brushing your teeth and then doing your skincare after which is hard if you are a midnight snacker or somebody who likes to eat later at night it can be hard to do your skincare routine first but ideally that is the best option if you are struggling with PD especially because it can commonly af affect this area of skin that can get some residue from our toothpaste and brushing our teeth but this is a great one and the brand is called David's I will link all of these products in the description box I hope you guys found this video helpful please let me know any questions you might have about PD about skincare about me you can leave them in the comments if I don't know the answer I will try to find an expert who can answer your questions thank you so much for watching love you guys so so much and I will talk to you in the next video.